Roger, we're now in the downstairs area. Now, I know for a lot of people, there's a, a myth out there that a front door on one side of the house opening to another door on the opposite side of the house can be um, negative feng shui. Well, Robin, it's, it's, it's very interesting because uh, there's lots of feng shui books now and uh, readers, you know, they will read something about feng shui like this, you know, front door and back door and then um, sometimes they start to freak out about their house, etc. Um, everything is in relationship and everything is in a scale and that dynamic, for instance, the front door and the back door, it's usually applying to where there's a corridor and it's, you know, from the front door you can see the street and the energy is like rushing through the house and dividing the house. Now in this situation, we've actually got the front door to the side of the house. Yep. So we come up the pathway and it's a very settled feeling just outside the door here and that's what we call the Ming Tang or the Bright Palace where the energy just starts to kind of hover and transform before it comes into the house. Mm -hmm. So that's not an active energy. Plus this line, this visual line between the front door and the side door, yep. you'll notice that the fence is here, so the energy is very nicely contained. Mm -hmm. So in actual fact, that doesn't apply to this house okay. at all. Okay. I mean, this, this orientation is quite good. And also, I've done the horoscope of the house. Ah. And in the horoscope of the house, we look at cosmological forces and where they, where they sort of exist. And this has very good chi, having the front door here. And it's just a good, obviously it's a good design technique putting the, the front door to the side like this because it allows you to maximise the amount of uh, space here. Okay, beautiful. Well, while you're enjoying yourself sitting there at the breakfast bar, could you tell us a little bit about the sharp edges? Well, you know, this house we would say is rather yang. It's got uh, a lot of exposure and it's got hard floors and it's got quite a lot of angles to it, mm -hmm. right, and sharp angles. So essentially just bringing a little bit of more balance back in here would love, in feng shui we really, we really celebrate curves and softness. So we, you need a little a, a balance between the masculine and the feminine. Mm -hmm. So um, I would suggest that when they are getting around to perhaps redesigning the kitchen a little bit, that they could easily simply just integrate you know, a more curved, more softer yes. bench top. Yep. That way you could... Um, distribute the chairs evenly around it, becomes a wonderful center for, you know, human activity, which we call the Ren Qi, which is this Chinese word that means heart Qi. Mm. So it's a, a, a matter of kind of gathering the, the human energy around uh, the table. And to, to facilitate that, you, you usually need more softer curve here, rather than this hard angle. Yeah. Okay. It, that's not sort of attractive. Okay. Beautiful. Behind you, those flowers, they would be good yin and yin energy, wouldn't they? They're wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always uh, great to have uh, flowers in the home. Uh, it brings up, you know, the heart energy. Yeah. Okay. We might have a look outside now. Sure. All righty. Roger, we're now downstairs in the lower level um, on the lovely grassy area overlooking the ocean, which is in front of the actual office. What do you have there in front of you again that we were talking about earlier? Uh, it's called the Lopan Compass mm -hmm. and essentially it is a smorgasbord of a lot of the cosmological and metaphysical aspects that we look at in Feng Shui. For instance, first of all it's simply based on the sun's pattern and then we have the eight trigrams from the I Ching and other aspects like uh, you know a natural calendar and various techniques that we do in Feng Shui. So essentially we take a reading based on the sitting and facing of a house. So for instance, this house is orientated back here towards the, the rock, the yep. mountain, and it's facing the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the direction I get from this is directly due east. From that information, I can then look at the eight trigrams and the sun's pattern and uh, other metaphysical attributes of the house. Uh, this is really, really quite good feng shui overall because you've got this beautiful view called, you know, we call that the red bird. It's where the energy is active and bright and cheerful and it's being contained by the mountain back here. And you'll see that it's like what we call a little 
armchair, the sort of feeling of sitting back into an armchair. It's cradled, isn't it? It's a cradle. By nature. Look, you know, very yeah. good. You know, and that's the definition of feng shui, is, you know, finding the areas where the land and the ocean meet and where it generates a good charge of energy. Also, what's unique about this is you've got a little bit of a classical feng shui arrangement because not only do you have the mountain back here, which we call the black turtle, but to the left you have the dragon and to the right you have the tiger. Mm -hmm. And the dragon needs to be sort of dominating a little bit as opposed to the tiger, a little bit more undulating, a little bit more jagged. So it's actually overall very good feng shui to you know, have, have a house. Also some other simple features of the house, it's a pole house and we love pole houses in feng shui. Uh, we love uh, building with stone and timber. And in a way, uh, not so much metal. These days, often they come in with like metal uh, infrastructure into the house. And essentially metal just breaks a lot of the life force. And it's also not good building biology either, and which we learned good, yeah, last it, week's program with Alison. Metal will pick up all of the electromagnetic yes. fields, etc. Yeah. So timber and stone are paramagnetic forces. Mm -hmm. That's what you call chi, life force. And the closer we are to that and the more we integrate that into the house, the healthier, more vibrant we feel. Okay. Well, let's go back inside and we'll find out from Megan what she thinks of all this. Good.